What is up everybody out there? Chris at Team Aquascape. Today's video, we are going to be transforming this space into our reptile enclosure. Stay tuned. So as I said guys and girls out there, today we are going to be transforming this space behind me into our reptile enclosure. This is going to house all of our turtles, our Asian water monitor, and our alligator snapping turtle here at Aqualand. So, Micho, you ready to get started? Yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> Okay, so as you guys can see, the underlayment, this is our cheap insurance, it's gonna give us that padding to ensure we soften up that concrete surface. There's also polystyrofoam insulation underneath the fabric. So again, it's all about insurance so that we make sure there's no holes poked in the liner. Next step, liner. All right, so here we are. These guys are really getting into the work, tucking the liner underneath this deck that is out over the fish retail experience enclosure. Nick, what do we got going on next, bud? So what we're doing right now is we're trying to get as many of these folds out as possible because it's only gonna make it easier on us down the road when we're putting aqua box in, when we're putting a bog system in. So once all these folds are out, then we're gonna come in with a brick wall here to go ahead and build up our wetland, just like we did in that one. Once we get that brick wall built, we can actually go ahead and put all the components in for that wetland filtration system, get all these blocks in, and that'll kind of be the base for the whole reptile enclosure. So Matt, you're standing right in the the center of the bog filter actually where what the snorkel is going to go right where i'm standing perfect about right here uh, and then we're also going to get aqua blocks surrounding that uh, we're going to build a little wall going right here we put a cleat in underneath the liner i don't know if you can see but that is actually going to hold those bricks from moving now with all the gravel and water and everything that's going to be in here this is really important part because this is going to be the filtration and like the kidney for the entire system so it's going to keep the whole ecosystem healthy we got to make sure that we do a good job getting everything just right with this as nick was saying we are going to get fabric to cover the entirety of the liner in here then we're going to get our wetland filter which is located right here and at the same time while that's being built, we are going to fill all this with aqua blocks, some large, some small. And the reason for that is that's going to occupy space for water volume without making it too terribly deep in here. Remember, we have a monitor in here. We have a ton of turtles. We want these things to be viewable by the public and have this be a very interactive system. We don't want three feet of water in here because the turtles will escape down underneath and you would never see them. And we really only need at most about two feet of water for the monitor to kind of fully submerge, but we'll have these large and multiple basking areas for the turtles, shallow waters, moving streams, that kind of stuff. I can't wait to get started. This is the funnest part of the project now is after we get the components in, is getting all of the rock and the other elements in here and really creating this reptile enclosure. All right guys, so another big moment for us right here. We are filling in the wetland filter with gravel right now, or at least getting the bottom filled with gravel so that we can set our centipede. And then from there, we can fill the whole thing up with gravel. If you want more information on the science behind the wetland, check out Ed the Pond Professor's videos on that. Or if you want more information on the construction of them, because I know we've done a couple videos, check out previous videos. Other than that, this is what we're doing. Bring that level up so we can get this bad boy level with the snorkel. Once that's all done, we'll go ahead. And because this is inside, you saw how we did it on that pond, we'll have this extra liner here that actually does not have any water holding capacity, so to speak, but that will keep water from migrating through this brick wall. And then once that's in, we'll go ahead and build that thing up with gravel and that wetland will be done today. We got Nick over here working extremely hard. <laughs> He's a one-man wrecking crew. So Nick right now is finishing up the gravel in the bog area down here. However, I just got a call from Martin in the warehouse. We got to rush over. FedEx is here, Nick. And uh -oh, we have FedEx. I'm FedEx. On a package. <laughs> so Nick, um, apparently FedEx is here. We had a next day air. Our fish from Nagata, Japan. Nagata, those are the fish, the imported koi that Greg picked out with his dad back in October of last year, along with Tim Waddington of KoiTrips.com. 
So super excited to see these huge fish. We have to accept them here at receiving and then we're gonna get them into our new enclosure. So this should be pretty exciting. I can't wait to see what they look like. Nick, I think the FedEx driver, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the fish. Um, I think they didn't make it. Oh, oh you're there. Oh, wow. Wow. These boxes are perfect. It looks like they're handled very nicely. I think we should open these things up and take them over to the pond. These are the fish, like I said, that Greg and his dad picked out last October. If you want to go back to that video and check out their amazing trip, check out the link above, below, or wherever the heck they're going to put it. Let's get these boxes over to our enclosure area, check them out, and then we'll float these fish for a little bit, and then we'll totally release them into the enclosure that we've been working feverishly to get done. Special delivery. This is like Christmas here at Aqualand. Greg is going to be super, super excited. Unfortunately, he wasn't here himself to receive these, the beauties that he picked out. Here we go. Safe transport. Beautiful. Look at him. Oh, just look at him. They're pretty cool looking, ain't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Nick, why do you think it's uh, super important to float these fish before we introduce them into the pond? The main reason, at least that I was told, is because it's been such a long trip from Japan, they actually need to learn how to swim again. Mm. So they come with floaties. That makes sense. And then we don't have to teach them. You literally just let them go. Let them sit for a little while, good to go. Maybe there's there's a parent fish in there that will teach the rest of the younglings how to yeah, swim? Yeah, like if you, you see, so? a lot of these red ones are actually trained lifeguards. <laughs> It's like Baywatch. It's it's Koi Watch here in um, inside Aqualand. The reason that we are floating the fish is to acclimate them to the temperature of the pond wire that we're going to be releasing them into. Once these bags have a chance to kind of float and the temperatures start to equalize out a little bit more, we'll take some of this pond water, we'll open up these bags, and we'll actually mix some of that water together so it's not such a shock to the fish's systems. So rather than these fishes doing cannonballs into our pond, we're just going to let them dip their fins in for a little bit and um, get them ready for their long-term temporary home. No cannonballs in the pond. No I cannonballs. Mm -hmm. We should put that on a sign. Koi guard on duty, no cannonballs in pond. Now that we have fish in here and we are gonna have more fish in over there, the main objective is, is to get those bacteria cultures up, the beneficial bacteria cultures. The fish and the bacteria have a very symbiotic relationship. So what I mean by a symbiotic relationship is that one really can't survive without the other. The bacteria needs the fish, needs the nitrates from the fish waste to go ahead and thrive. At the same turn, the fish need the water quality that that bacteria provides. So with that being said, we need to get some biological structure in here, AKA bio balls, to really give that bacteria a place to colonate over the next few weeks. That's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go rob some already established bio balls that have plenty of beneficial bacteria colonized on them to really give these ponds a jump start. So here we are, we're in the retail store. I found some bio balls that are in their natural habitat right now, and we do not want to scoop them. You can see right there. They're doing exactly what they're meant to do, colonizing beneficial bacteria as they should. Let's get them. You see all the surface area that's present in these bio balls. That gives that bacteria plenty of room to colonize. I can't believe we're even seeing this. So some of you guys may be wondering what a bio ball even is or what the job of one is. I got the perfect person to explain it to you and it's not me, Matt himself. What are you holding there, Matt? Uh, these are bio balls. There's a lot of surface area, so beneficial bacteria can colonize on this. Also, unlike lava rock, you can reuse these every year by just rinsing them off. Using bio balls in your pond is really the most effective way to colonize the bacteria in your pond. So that is why we are using them 
in these ponds as well as we need to jumpstart our bacteria. So we just rob them from the front, rob them to the back, and now we can get on with putting fish in. We are busy rocking in the reptile enclosure right now. However, I just got word from Amy, our amazing executive assistant of the Pond Guy himself, saying that Pond Guy is walking through the doors here at Aqualand. This is going to be his first glimpse of the fish that he claimed back on his trip with his dad and Tim Waddington of KoiTrips.com in Nagata, Japan. So I can't wait to see what he thinks about hey, it. Hey, hey there he is. About me? We are. What's up, partner? Nice. Oh, the babies. You even got the net on smart. They look fantastic in here, Chris. Look at that. I think you did a great job picking these out. I would well, say you have impeccable choice or taste. Well, it's kind of hard to kind of hard to miss over there. I think I'm gonna go get my bathing suit on and start getting some underwater pictures. I love my job. <laughs>